Hey guys, welcome to May Tribes One Kingdom. It's your friend Dustin here, back with another wonderful video with you uh, for you. Um, wow, <laughs> I can't believe I just screwed that intro up. The <laughs> man for them. Oh, you know that is okay. I, I guess it is, so it's not really a screw up except for this part explaining it. Um, and I'm welcomed by my wonderful and crazy co-host. Hey, it's John, and I apologize for how my voice sounds. My allergies have been kicking my butt all week. Yeah, he sounds all nasally, so. I sound like Bob Dylan. I'm just going to let the silence speak for itself. <laughs> so, hey, guys. So um, as you already seen in our intro, this month's going to be on holiness. And so we're going to obviously whenever we start these things we always have to explain what our topic is right john mm -hmm. so stay tuned after this intro we will get right into it all right john you ready to be talking about some holiness Please don't ever say it like that again. Yes, I'm very pumped for this. That intro really gets you fired up. And if it doesn't, rewind the video and listen to it again. Are you ready to talk about this holiness? Let's just get into the video. You said to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. <wow. laughs> so, obviously, we already said we're talking about holiness today. So what is holiness? Well, uh, John, what is holiness? Well, so holiness is a really unique word because it has a couple of different definitions. Okay. And it depends on the context with which you're talking about it because there are some definitions for instance there's one definition that is exclusive for god only belongs to him but then there's other definitions of holiness that belong to both god and can belong to humans okay so i guess we'll just talk about them all so of well, course the most before we get into that part holiness means to be set apart Mm -hmm. or to be sanctified it is mm -hmm. a journey it is not well holiness is a state but we are on the holiness journey called sanctification mm -hmm. um, it's not coming home but it's not a one and done uh, like salvation no it is a journey that's going to take an entire lifetime because when we enter into those pearly gates dancing on the streets of gold um we're going to be holy because we are going to be set apart from this sin from this world and not even just that from our sinful flesh um the spirit our spirit will depart from this um physical form and enter into heaven with god and the new earth yes we can't forget about the new earth and that's the thing about holiness is that it ultimately finds its fulfillment, just like love and mercy and grace. It ultimately finds its definition in God. Oh, yeah. God sets the standard for everything, right, John? Amen. Amen. So, uh, before we go too far into that, this, I did remember some part of it, just so you guys get a little bit of imagery to understand the importance of holiness. Remember in the book of Exodus, and every time you see the tabernacle and even into the new temple, God was always separated by a veil and by a building um, and only was allowed, the only one who was allowed to make entrance into the Holy of Holies, which is where his presence dwelt, was the high priest who was um, ceremonially clean. And, he, and this, there was a whole list of clean, cleansings. And if they weren't cleaned, are ceremonially clean they traditionally they wear a rope with a bell on it and if the bell stopped it literally meant that the high priest died because he did not do the thing, right thing and so they pulled him out and sent the next high priest in on the list <laughs> sorry <laughs> so the thing about holiness is that it's a beautiful thing uh I have to say it's it's an amazing thing because 
as you'll see as we discuss holiness with God, God's holiness is so amazing, and yet he chooses to interact with us lowly beings. Absolutely. Oh, and I, I, remember, go ahead. I remember the thing I was going to say. I would also remind you of Ma- Malachi, where God calls himself a silver refiner. He call, talks about refining us like the silver refiner f- refines their silver in the fire. Yes. And when, is, when do you know when silver is done, John? You can see your reflection in it. Absolutely. So the work's never done until the, the creator sees his reflection perfectly in it without any deformity or uh, um, any blemish. Damage. Blemish. There we go. That's the right word. Amen. Um, and Jesus, Jesus came as our high priest um, to be the perfect high priest that so we don't need an intercessor. Or let me correct a human intercessor. We have that permanent intercessor in Jesus Christ, and because He is God, He is eternally holy. So we don't have to worry about Him falling short. We don't no. have to worry no. about anything about Him. So we have that perfect intercessor. We also have the intercessor of the Holy Spirit as well. We don't need Jesus to wear a bell so we can hear if He gets struck down and pull Him out, because there's no chance of that happening. A little side note. I wonder if, like, when the first high priest died, they say, high priest number 375, it's your lucky day. Uh, I doubt it. I actually imagine there would be a lot of wailing. (laughs) I'm sorry. I had to make that joke. You're terrible. Let's get into some scripture. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So our first scripture is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doors, the doorpost and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. So whenever I hear this verse, I kind of have to slow it down a little in my mind and just mm-hmm. imagine how the seraphim, because this is the seraphim, if you don't know, just imagine how they're calling out, Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And God is triple holy, which, you know, is amazing. (laughs) Instead of um, a triple A, we got triple H. Um, Please do not sue me WWE or uh, AEW or whoever owns them. Um, WWE. (laughs) Whatever. Uh, he's the he's the real Triple H. He is the holy, holy, holy. Um, and you know what though? This you know the rule of threes. We have as we believe that God exists in the Trinity. So I believe that you know honestly, I could just picture the seraphim are looking to the Father saying holy, then to the Son saying holy, and then to the Holy Spirit saying holy. Ooh, that's amazing. I hadn't even thought about. Well, I kind of thought about it, but you you put it in a better picture. Yeah, I can. I can't imagine it, but um, there's so much beauty there. Knowing that God is holy, He's perfect. He is apart from this sinful world, and He has the ability to pull us out of it. But not even just that. They're like the seraphim. That's their single role is to proclaim the glory and the holiness of God. Mm-hmm. Not because they, not because they have to, but because they want to. They see that in everything that he has done, in all of creation, everything he's done, he is making things holy. He's making things perfect. He's making things that are good. And he has earned he's he's earned it. I don't want to say earned it. I don't think he's earned it. He has um he de- I'm sorry. He deserves it. He deserves it. It is if that's the right word. He deserves it because it is a response to everything he's already done. Exactly. Like who could you know the seraphim sometimes i sometimes i envy the seraphim in a not you know sinful way but like sometimes I, sometimes i envy them in the sense that they get to be right next to god and just imagining how overwhelming it must be to be in his presence and what response can you give besides holy 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 is the lord Last, I believe it was last month or a couple months ago, I mentioned that whenever I, um, it was during one of our song analysis videos, mm-hmm. I mentioned that every time that I sing praise and worship, I 
I try to imagine myself or position myself to where, or imagine that I'm sitting at the foot of the throne of God. It was last month. It was last month. Okay, good. Um, and because I was the right month to do it. But anyways, I imagine myself there, and I can. And every time I do that, I just I can't get through a quarter of the song without tears just coming down my face. I only then go a whole line without crying because it's like John said. I envy the role of the of the um, seraphim, being able to do that twenty four seven. 24 seven praise for eternity for eternity. That's going to be wonderful. Although yeah. I probably, put, I probably wouldn't be the one singing. I probably would be the one dancing like David danced. <laughs> I don't, and, and the only reason why I say that is because I have, a, you know, being in his presence, I don't think I could sit still. Oh, I don't, I don't think, think I could. could. Because even the seraphim are flying back and forth. Oh, that must be a magnificent sight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you read further, we're not going to read this part, but if you read further and just see Isaiah's reaction, he realizes how insignificant he is next to the Holy of Holies, and yet God wants him. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Uh, before we get too emotional, so let's get to the next scripture. <laughs> um, and... Just you know, we're not going to apologize for getting emotional because this is no, we cannot. Is, we, we, we cannot. And honestly, if you're not getting emotional over this, where are you at? I'm just kidding. Um, no. <laughs> no, but you know, I want you to to put the and this is but this is a side note. This is honestly really important. Put your walls down when you're talking mm -hmm. about. When you want to be in God's presence, and I, you know, I went to a worship service last night. It was the best thing I could have ever done because all I could hear from God is, "They put your walls down, put your walls down, drop the walls," because you can't let God in if your walls are still up. And the moment I did that, um, it, it, it got better. I got to experience time with God, and it was—it's one that I can't put into words. <laughs> So our next set of scripture is um, Isaiah 57, 15. For this is what the high and exalted one says, he who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with the one who is contrite and lowly in spirit. To, to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. So. I just want to mention two things here. First of all, this verse talks about where God lives. And second off, did you notice how it identifies his name, Dustin? Hmm. Whose name is holy. Yes. The That's name of the Lord God, Yehovah, is holy. It's set apart. It's beyond anything else in creation. You know, it, it draws me back to, uh, and we did a, um, we did two playlists with this. Mm -hmm. um, soon to be three. Yep. Um, just <laughs> about the names of God and titles of Jesus. And there's a reason why the Jews did that. And, the, and some of the Gentiles. There's a reason why they did that. Because mm -hmm. they could not think, think of one name that could suffice to, um, to, to exclaim how good God is. And not only that, they want to explain the different areas that God was good and good to them in. Mm -hmm. you know, he was their provider when they needed provision. He was their healer when they needed a doctor. He mm -hmm. was their peace when they were in war. Yeah, and he those was, are just three major ones. Amen. And that's the thing. God's name is holy. And this is this is the definition of holiness right here, set apart. God's name is set apart. No one else in creation shares his name. He says in another part of Isaiah, I will not give my glory to another. Amen. And so this just shows you that this is why God refuses to share the spotlight with other gods, other beings, other anything, because they don't deserve it. They shouldn't be up there. They don't deserve the spotlight at all. That would be like me going up and interrupting a professional spotlight a professional football game and demanding the same credit and attention that the football players get. 
I would rightfully be booed out of there because what am I doing there? I don't deserve to be there. Get out of there. You know, I actually had the opportunity of, uh, John wasn't there, unfortunately, but it was TYI. It was uh, 2023, I believe. Yeah, it was 2023. It was the last one I went to. And it was Aaron McLean on stage. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, for a moment, I need to humble myself. I want you guys to know this is not me. Mm-hmm. This is not for me. This is for God. Yeah. Everything that we do and say, it is towards God. Don't get, don't cheer for me. Don't give me any applause. And if you're a worship leader, please follow this example. Do not take the praise from God. Don't attempt to do so. And if somebody tries to bring you praise, remember the words of the angel um, in Revelation to John. Don't bow down to creation. You bow down to the creator. Amen. Yeah, so those words kind of like really stuck with me. So thank you, Aaron, if you're watching this video. I love Aaron. We went, we went to Romania together on a mission trip. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. I can imagine the amount of stories you guys have. But let's get to the next set of scriptures. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass them. <laughs> Leviticus they 19. Uh-huh. They would embarrass me, not him. <laughs> well, him too. Um, and Leviticus 19.2. Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, be holy because I, the Lord God, am holy. Okay. So we already established that God is in a high and holy place. He is separated from this world because he cannot, exi- he cannot out of choice, put himself in an area where there is sin. Because he knows that his very presence will destroy anything tainted with sin. Mm-hmm. As we saw, as we just talked about with the Holy of Holies, that's why there was a list of ceremonies that had to be done. Again, thankfully, we don't have that that necessity because of a perfect high priest. Um, But now it is, you know, and this is coming from Leviticus. This is not even just, this is not the New Testament. Uh, This is the Old Testament. He is declaring that we must become holy. We must become set apart from this world. And especially in this time of Israel's history, and even now, I, we could probably put a lot of parallels, but we're not going to do that. It takes the entire video to do it. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, there was a lot of pagan and horrific stuff that was going on in the area surrounding Israel. Um, that, that not the... Uh, To the land of Canaan, they were going to be around people who were pagan and ho- committing horrible acts to one to another. And so God is saying, when you enter into this place, remember you are my people. I have set you apart for a greater purpose. Do not mm-hmm. join in with the Canaanites, the Amalekites, the Moabites, whoever else is living in this region. They're not for you. Do not welcome them. In fact, in several instances, he he called for them to eliminate those tribes because they were um, evil. They were evil. I mean, there was even an instance where an entire tribe of Israel was wiped out because they were committing an evil act. Well, almost an entire tribe. Well, almost an entire tribe. And I will say also, we don't have this verse. We're not going to read this verse, but Peter reflects this also. So you if you want to sit there and say, well, this only applies to Israel. No, Peter applies this to the church as well. In first Peter two, nine, we are to be a holy nation of Royal priests. Yeah, and it's, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying as the church, that is our call. Um, and to go on another note, um, or not another note to, to support that as well. Read the book of Romans, specifically mm-hmm. chapter seven, eight, nine. Paul literally says we are not the, you know, when God gives these ordinances, he's not talking to the lineage of Israel. He is talking to the uh, spiritual nation of Israel. Yes. It is, what, not, it is not the lineage. It is the author of the lineage. So what does it look like to be holy like God? I believe Micah chapter six, verse eight, best summarizes what this looks like. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Notice that none of those is put above each other. They're all equal. That in order to be holy, in order to do what God requires, you have to do all that. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Uh, acting justly, does not, it means to follow the law, but not the law of man, but the law of God, the law of righteousness. Amen. Um, again, you can find that in any of Paul's letters where I know Jesus mentions a lot of that in, the New in his Gospels. Mm -hmm. uh, but Paul goes a little deeper and helps new Christians come to a greater understanding of what Jesus was referring to in the gospel. So yes. read all Paul's yeah. letters. I'm just, I'm not going to and any other letter in the New Testament, really. Um, just read they, Oh, yeah. Read the whole New Testament. And while um, and you know, you're at it, you might as well go ahead and read the whole Old Testament, too. <laughs> Yeah, start with the New Testament. I, re I recommend starting with the New Testament, not because the New Testament or the, old, the New Testament is better than the Old Testament. I'm not saying at all. The whole, the whole Bible is good. I recommend you start with the New Testament because there's a lot of references to the Old Testament. And when you do that and you start reading them, it's all going to start clicking in your head. It's like, oh, I remember that. Oh, remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And it allows for you to understand it's one continuous story. Yes. And so, it's God's story, his story, not ours. Yes. So to act justly, like that is to follow God's laws, not man's. To love mercy means to be as God is. God loves being merciful. God shows compassion to the weakest amongst us, to the lowest in society. God shows them love and compassion, and we should too. And to walk humbly with our God. Dustin, how would you define walking humbly with your God? not taking credit for things that he's doing amen i would say even going a step further stepping back let god lead the way walk humbly with him so dustin can attest to this sometimes i need to be guided around and i'll grab hold of someone's arm and i'll let them guide me and that's the kind of relationship we need to have when we walk with god grab hold of his arm and let him lead the way yeah, there's a perfect song for that. Let uh, um, Jesus take the wheel. I know it sounds a little silly, and it may, and I know it's a country song. And I know country is not the best uh, genre of music, um, but it's a good song. I, 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 I would give it a listen. I recommend that to you. We know it's not really a song of you. Um, give it a listen, and it'll help you understand what we're really talking about when we say, let Jesus take the wheel. Take a step back. You're not in control. I was going to recommend The Well by Casting Crowns, but okay. Um, there's another song called Spirit Lead Me. Um, there's plenty of songs out there that talk about stepping back and then allowing God to lead us. Um, yeah. I'm just, to, um, to really drive that point home, um, goodness, I cannot remember the scripture verse. I know it's in Psalms. I think it's 119. Probably. I think 112. He is a light to my feet, and a, or he's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. One nineteen one oh five. Your um, word is a light to my feet and a light to my path. Exactly. Okay. I, I'm glad I was in the right chapter. That was better than what I did last time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He's setting the ways. He is the author of our life. He knows our next step. Why are you not going to trust him? Your big headedness is not going to is not going to change God's mind. You're not no. going to look to God and say, "Hey, uh, can you give me a million dollars tomorrow?" He'd probably be like, um, yeah, no. "No, we're not doing that." <laughs> well, you can't look at God and say, "Hey, God, do it this way. I think this would be better." God's not going to sit down and be like, he's not going to throw up his hands and be like, "By Lord, you're right. It would be better to do it that way. Thank you for correcting me." No, God's going to be like, "I already know what's best." I know the right way. You need to trust me. And who are you going to trust better? Um, a fallible human or the most holy and righteous God who has the ability to strike you down in the next moment? I'm just kidding about that last part. Here's the <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. I, no, everyone I've met 
has let me down at one point or another. And I've let everybody I know down at one point or another. So that automatically disqualifies everyone I know, and it disqualifies me. So I'm going to let God take the lead. Oh, there's another song. It's called Take the Lead. It's a, it's a really, it's a modernized song, but he gets like really deep into it. He's, one of the lines says, who's going to take the lead? Who's going to put his life on the line? Mm. And then at the end of it, he said, he's going to take the lead and he's going to put it, and he put his life on the line for us. Amen. I don't so, know anyone else who yeah. can really willing to go that far for anyone else. So I want to trust that man. Um, we do have one more scripture verse, but that's sort of to cap off everything we've said. And we're going to take it from one of Paul's letters. <laughs> the uh, letter to the church of Ephesus, uh, the fourth chapter, 20 to 24. That, however, is not the way of life you learn. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God, and to true righteousness and holiness. Okay, two key things that or sorry, there's three key things that Paul talks about here. First, humans are deceitful. That is their nature. We are going to be deceitful. That is our call. Um, and that's where sin is going to lead us. It is it, Sin is the cancer to our flesh. It is going to be there until the day we die. Um, mm-hmm. To be renewed in your mind or to have a new attitude of your mind. We got to change our mindset on a lot of things. We got to look to God and say, okay, God, I believe this, but help me to believe the way you want me to believe. Help me to, to trust the way you want me to trust and help me to know the things that you want me to know, not the things of this world. Help me to focus on what's important according to your will and not what is according to my will. Mm-hmm. And then the last part is to put on a new self. And this new self is created to um, created to be like God. And so that means we are, we are to be Christ's ambassadors. But the, the, the word Christian, though at one point was meant to be something to uh, sort mm-hmm. of make fun of the Christians, um, but Christians took it as a badge of honor. It means little Christ. So when you're taking on that name or that title of Christian, you are now becoming little Christ. You're becoming like Christ. You're to show his qualities. You're to show, you're honestly supposed to be like, to be Jesus to everyone you meet. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi says this, um, at la- or preach the gospel to all the world and at last use words. So if we can't be Christ to everyone, then we're, our words are going to mean nothing. So we must be Christ. And in order to be like Christ, we need to be set apart. Our minds need to be set apart from this world. Yes, we need to have true righteousness and true holiness. And that only comes from, as Micah said, walking humbly with your God. Amen. So... I know it was a lot to digest. I recommend you guys go back and rewatch this video a few times and look at different segments of things that we've talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything we've said, please go ahead in the comment section. We're mm-hmm. always here to answer questions. We're not here just to speak at you, but with you. So yes. we'll gladly talk with you guys. We'll talk, you know, explain some things we've talked about. And if we if we need to change some things, we can change some things. If we're wrong, um, you can you can always email us at kingdomstudy365 at gmail.com. We will always respond. Either me or John will respond to your email, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. And hopefully, we'll be able to explain it a little better or um, have a or have just a great conversation. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and God bless you.